Hello, my name is Kai Agne. I'm the CEO of the Maria DB Foundation, and my topic is ensuring user focus of open source development with obviously MariaDB Server as the case. So the overall thinking here is the risk of myopia. Even a large open source project risks a focus that is too internal. There is an obvious solution to this, uh, just to listen to the users, but that is very much easier said than done. So this presentation will be about how we've approached this, this issue, uh, what has been the logic behind the user engagement of the MariaDB Foundation. Prior to last year's FOSDEM, or shall we say up until last year's FOSDEM, and then our learnings during the pandemic. And the areas here will be around what is described in this Vitruvian sea lion diagram on this slide, meaning mainly our core uh, mission, which is about uh, promoting the development of the MariaDB server and the adoption of the MariaDB. So, so I've looked at the other presentations, there's a total of 15 FOSDEM presentations of this community dev room, and they are very much touching on the same type of things that I will be describing in my presentation. So many of them are on remoteness during the pandemic. We live in a distance world, and my thinking here is that the learnings of this uh, year or however long it will take will remain after the pandemic and that's not just going to be how to interact on Zoom. I believe that next time we will meet in Brussels it won't be like it was in February 2020. Many of the presentations are about communication, about fostering collaboration, yes we'll do that here. I don't think in my presentation you'll see so many insights on moderating conflict but more about the desire to listen and learn. Uh, some presentations focus on the priorities here. What should the priorities be? Our priority up until uh, last year's FOSTIM was primarily the code contributors. Last year we focused more on users of the MariaDB server because that's a more scalable way of interacting. You'll see why. Uh, there's another entity here beside the MariaDB Foundation, it's called the MariaDB Corporation. Their focus is about paying customers. Ours is about the user base and the code contributors. There will be other uh, touching points with other presentations. I think one that I'm very much looking forward is the presentation on for open source being more than a license. I agree to that, but how do we market it? That's the big question. So our primary goal when talking to our user base is to reach out of the bubble. Uh, MariaDB was born within the MySQL ecosystem and the dynamics of former colleagues and customers of the company MySQL AB is very much a bubble. So MariaDB is a bubble within the outer bubble of former MySQL people, which you will see a picture of here. To, uh, close colleagues from MySQL AB uh, within the MySQL bubble, but currently not within the uh, MariaDB employers, uh, employees at least. But uh, our need is not to just talk within this bubble. The bubble is important, but we need to talk to the Postgres users, the Oracle users, the MongoDB users, those who primarily focus on NoSQL. So how do we reach out to that bubble? Now, in our efforts to reach out of the bubble, we've realized that it's uh, not just about development. So I'm going here to deliver most of my uh, presentation in the form of insights, distilled conclusions that we came uh, come to. And uh, the precious lessons we've learned is that people do not use the cool features that we've developed in the MariaDB server. They're not aware of that, but they do need that. So the question is, why didn't you tell us, or why didn't we tell you? This question is as frustrating for us as it is for the users. And there's a self centric reason to this. People don't read our release notes, people don't read our blogs. But of course, uh, 
from their perspective, it, it looks different. And the real reason is that we phrase stuff in jargon which is familiar to the bubble, not to the users of NoSCAN, for instance. We reach out to the wrong places, probably are not sufficiently uh, giving attention to something like stack overflow. Sometimes it's not even a desire, a genuine desire by, by all of us to want to start from a user perspective. I believe we have overcome come that challenge, but it still is a question of us not being able to start properly from a user perspective. So the corollary of this, it's not always about development, is that we should refocus our resources. So when we're done with one development feature, the next step is not just to turn off the next JIRA task that is requested in some priority order by the bubble. Why should we develop code that won't be used? We've got plenty of code that is useful and not being used out there. So then we ask the insightful uh, developers uh, to be part of uh, marketing. Marketing is an ugly word here. We ask our own developers, who we believe are smart enough, just like most developers are, I'm not a believer in this 10x developer kind of thing, and ask them uh, to be part of explaining, without fluff, how the things work. Uh, using blogs, using videos, but most of all by interacting, which in itself, of course, is a challenge during a pandemic, or actually it might be even easier because people are willing to interact over virtual means uh, and do not require travel. Another insight is uh, to iterate qualitatively what questions to ask. So we had an original question posed by the founder of MediaDB. Uh, because we really need to know, does the user base want us to use our limited resource to fix bugs or to, get, to develop new features? Our next step in answering that question was detailed public interviews on our server Minifest. And uh, the interview target I had there was Microsoft who said, yep, stability is most important of it all, but it's okay. Uh, the performance is what we would like you to focus on, performance is second, and usability of that performance requires there to be very few knobs to turn to enable performance. Do all of that prior to implementing new features. There's an interview on that and I provided the URL on the slide. So the insight for us was that the question was wrong to begin with, it was not detailed enough. The right question is, do you want us to use our limited resources to fix bugs? to improve performance, to increase usability, or to develop new features. And not everybody might have the same priorities as Microsoft had, but at least we now know how to ask the question properly. The uh, second corollary of this was uh, the conclusion from another interview uh, I did on the MariaDB server manifest with DBS Bank, Development Bank of Singapore, one of the world's most, uh, the biggest and uh, uh, most profitable banks who has swapped their use of Oracle and migrated it to MariaDB server. I'm now talking Oracle, Oracle, not, not MySQL. And their reply was almost the same. Stability is most important of it all and it is okay. And they even said that performance has become better and better every year and they're happy. And their complaint was actually more or less flattery. At least that's how we interpreted it. They said that their complaint is that there's a mismatch between the user base in the financial industry of MariaDB and uh, the product characteristics which merit a larger user base. And there's a link to that interview as well. Uh, another insight uh, when talking to our user base, it's, uh, it's about uh, jargon or the vocabulary, what kind of wording you use. So instance, for instance, when we are now trying to approach the NoSQL and MongoDB, shall we say, as an example, user base, there are some facts that, that we can start from, but they still need to be properly phrased. So we support in MariaDB many crucial aspects of JSON, and relational database management systems are structurally clean, and they can save a lot of work. And these object relational mappings are not self-evident how to do. There are many ways to skin such a cat. Now, this objective message needs to be packaged in a way that can be understood, 
uh, not just understood uh, intellectually but also emotionally by using the right uh, vocabulary. So one of our goals here is to look back at the network databases prior to uh, uh, the relational uh, databases were invented and uh, building bridges on what kind of issues they had and how similar they actually are to uh, uh, NoSQL and why uh, our uh, provided so, proposed solution is worthy of at least attention because they are another bubble, a bubble as well. Where we should say this, our goal, uh, perhaps we have to identify the right audience. And I think we should identify people singing in both choirs. We don't want to preach to the choir, we want to preach to another choir. Or listen to the other choir. And one way of uh, us doing this is, is, here's an example of a video uh, about the support of native JSON uh, in Maria. The most uh, profound experience last year was the Serverfest in September. We, we had a um, virtual meeting and uh, uh, where we tried to map the real life type of presentations to virtual ones in a new way. Listen to Anna Videnius' presentation on this, but in short, uh, we were now focusing on database users, not code contributors. We got over, well over 10,000 unique viewers in the Western world of YouTube and as many uh, in China over Billy Billy. We, we had uh, the same thing in, in three different locations. We called it Paris, New York and Singapore slash Beijing as symbols of the time zones so that people could attend the event uh, in their own working time. 35 talks by 30 presenters, many of which were user stories. So large numbers there. Uh, the insight here was that uh, or out, we came to our insight through a distant keynote uh, at Procona Live. I gave a keynote and it felt a bit artificial to talk into a camera uh, and uh, at the same time having to match a particular time uh, and standing in queue to, to present and not having an audience uh, clapping or booing or throwing uh, tomatoes at, at me or no signal from the audience. So the artificialness uh, of the situation was there anyway, so we might as well require recordings. Uh, and that was the keystone of, of the uh, insights that, that we got during or for the uh, server fest. We, we then broadcast the same things several times in the time zones. We had an interactive Q&A session, uh, but that was just a uh, follow-up by Kira Fosten and uh, we could clone the presenters so that the presenters could answer uh, questions by the audience while they were themselves talking in the recorded form. So there was a, a text session, a uh, chat session happening at the same time, and we provided some titles. People have accents, and sometimes native accents are hard to understand, sometimes non-native accents are hard to understand, so um, some titles help a lot. There's some more on this uh, on the URL I provided. So very particular other uh, insight is related to uh, approaching an audience which isn't open source at all, like Oracle users. And uh, here we are just at the beginning. How do we migrate the huge number of users who have not seen the light of open source and, and uh, still are paying uh, huge amounts of license money and even direct costs? For, for a database. And uh, here uh, I think migration is the key part and uh, sharing the user story of users like DBS Bank is the, the, the right way. But it still is a difficult dialogue to establish. And some of the uh, approaches uh, to different communities is, are nearly religious in their, in their nature. So, uh, how do we talk to the closed bubbles of MySQL and Postgres, which are also open source relational databases? So, uh, some people say, well, Maria, we used to say that there are plug-in compatible uh, alternative to MySQL. That might have been the case in the very early beginning. That's no longer the case, and that is a discussion point that we need to have. We're still highly 
uh, compatible. So from our perspective, it's about awareness, making people understand that there are differences between these databases and that you distinguish them through open source development model differences where uh, ours is, is, is an open development model, which is something somebody else here at this level will be talking about, whereas MySQL is more about dropping a uh, ready release uh, using the GPL license. We also have a difference towards um, Postgres because ours is a GPL license, which means that there are fewer forks and no uh, uh, similar, uh, not, not random um, uh, commercial extensions of, of the, the product because of the license nature. So here I think the discussion is about how to phrase the differences and how to approach the communities in a non-dogmatic way. In the picture you'll see our founder, Monty. But the most important insight of all, I think, is to not broadcast, but to listen. To bring people, different people together like we did for the manifest. We moderate them and then we see what happens. We start also with qualitative questions. Don't, we, we're not jumping into asking, so show of hands, how many of you want there to be new features and how many want to have bug fixes? Because that turned out to be a not so insightful question there, when there are four alternatives. We look for the unexpected because that's from what we can learn most from. We try to match jargon differences because people mean so different things with a simple word like support. Do you support uh, a particular operating system? That might mean different things to different people. Some mean do we do builds for it? Some mean can it be compiled for it? Some mean uh, are there entities providing commercial uh, uh, answers to questions? Uh, all of that needs to be uh, defined. And when you then come to these, uh, have these interactions and listen, then uh, that should be documented and, and iterated. We try to discuss it in concentric circles, first internally, and then if we believe that the uh, conclusions have to be verified externally, we uh, move on about. But most of all here, automation is overrated. You cannot delegate the listening towards the customers to an app. You, you need to have thinking human beings doing that. So prior to my last uh, slide, which is a plea to you, I'm uh, pointing out that uh, the Manilic Foundation exists due to uh, uh, its sponsors. We have platinum sponsors, Alibaba, Tencent, Microsoft, Manilic Corporation and ServiceNow, and gold sponsors, DBS Bank from Singapore, Visma and IBM, so thank you to them. And my concluding slide is a plea for help for you, and it's also a role model. It's not just an ask uh, uh, towards you to help Maria DB Foundation, but you can, uh, you can do a similar thing towards your community. So now in this thought experiment, you are the desired uh, uh, audience that we are trying to approach, the, the one you represent. And the fact is, we don't know you well enough. We don't know uh, whether we are of use for you, whether we might be so. So the way to figure out whether there is a match is for you to approach us, email us at foundation at mariadibi.org or myself at kai uh, at mariadibi.org and you uh, could then describe the signs and characteristics of your user base and how you use database, databases. Also, where do you interact online? How, it's not always obvious how to approach uh, your community and uh, uh, learn more about it. And then, based on that email and our thinking about it and looking at your online presence, we'll hopefully have a deep, qualitative meeting, changing uh, insights uh, between uh, your constituency and us. So, this was about ensuring user focus of open source development and obviously starting from MariaDB server. My name is Kai Arne and I hope this was of use for your particular uh, community. Thank you.